Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Yes. Beautiful. After a week away, we are back at our basement build and we are concentrating the start of the week by uh, getting ready to get the concrete poured for the floors. So we're going to start putting the final, um, so we're going to call it good hardcore down, if you like, because we've used uh, an inferior product to get us up to level, as you would have seen in the kitchen uh, area. It was quite low. And then we've got some decent stuff dropped off this morning. We're going to get that in place, get it whackered and flat. Then we've got some sand coming this afternoon to get to put that down to allow us then to put the DPM down and then concrete. On our horizon, we've also got first fixes complete, other than the uh, gas engineers coming in a day's time to just do the floor and return ready for the underfloor heating. And then we can start insulating and boarding and start looking at putting some finishing touches in. So that'd be quite exciting. So let's just get on with it. In the time lapse there, you watch just putting all of the hardcore into the rooms where it was required. And you can see now, it has all gone. After we've got the hardcore in the rooms, you can now see on the screen that we uh, went round after raking it all, we then dipped it all. We've left ourselves probably 10 mil or so, 15 mil higher than what we need to, to allow us to um, whacker it all down, which we'll be doing shortly. See in the kitchen here now, this is all ready to go. The only thing we haven't done with the gas engineer coming tomorrow, we haven't filled this bit in just because that is where he's going to have to do um, his uh, flow and return and mess with all that. To punch him through that hole there is what we're thinking. To come through into this sort of position to where the manifold is going in that corner. Before we carry on and do the next stage in the makeup of our floors and we talk you through that, just like to say a special thank you to this week's sponsor, which is HelloFresh. So I'll now hand you over to Adam. Well, if there's one thing we like to do on this channel, it is to promote things that we know that work. And beans that I have been a customer of HelloFresh's for ages now, way before they offered to collaborate very kindly. I know that this works and this works for us and our family. Now, for those of you who don't know, all you do, you click onto HelloFresh's website, you subscribe, you choose from a wide range of uh, meals that they have, set ingredients to the meals and turn up at your door. What I've ordered this week is a nice bit of fillet steak. Everything I need to make that meal is in this bag. And as you can see, it is coded number 32 because with every single meal, you get the recipe sheets numbered as well and you cannot go wrong and when i say everything that you need is in that bag it literally really is for instance you need a bit of garlic you get a bit of garlic you need a bit of cheese you get a bit of cheese look at that you get absolutely everything it's fantastic and what it, how it also works for us is that it gives us ideas that we would never ever have chosen before for instance pork and apple burgers that we made for the kids of a day they loved it and there's no way i would have thought of preparing sesame soy baked for, uh, chicken thighs, Waldorf style salad, chamula spice, lamb and rice, never even heard of it, let alone had the idea to actually prepare it for the family. It's absolutely fantastic. And they even do 
desserts. And speaking of desserts, HelloFresh have very kindly offered, uh, uh, given us an offer to give to you, um, that if you subscribe to them, you get 60% off your first box and free desserts for life, which is a little bit annoying, but that's the better deal that I get. So there you go. So uh, it's all on screen now. Scan the QR code. The link will be in the description. Take the details off the screen that you can see now. However you want to do it, I really recommend that you do. Thanks for watching. Back to Richard. We are at our level in here now, so we're happy with this. That over there, if you remember from previous episodes, that was already hardcore when we were putting the block work in to get us out in the mud because it was quite muddy over there. So that's actually to level. That's about 40 mil, 45 mil, dipping it all the way along, lower than what we need to be. So we'll have 45 mil of sand over there, 40 mil, which we're still happy with. That's been well compacted down. We will, however, sit the wacker plate on that when we sit the wacker plate on this. Another uh, thing we've done today, moving on, which is nicely, is we've been talking to the people who will be tanking all of this, all of this, and this. And they've kindly left us a piece of channel, which is what they'll use, got holes in the, in the sides there, look. And what they'll do is, we'll put our concrete in now, and then that will sit on top of the concrete like that. And then we will 50 mil uh, Celotex, Kingspan, whatever are, PIR insulation, up to the top of this where my thumb is there. They will then membrane all the way across the top of the 50 mil insulation and up the wall, membrane down the wall to that. And then because we've got to have 100 mil PIR in the floor now, we will then 100 mil over the top of that before screed. It just means that we haven't got to start messing, trying to notch out or cut notches in the concrete or whatever. He's more than happy with this going on the concrete. There is talk about it should go in the concrete, it's going to be low on the floor, but because of where we are and that we're not the water tables and everything, he's more than happy and confident in his system to put it on top of the concrete, which we are happy with as well, because he's happy. He's going to tank all these walls and make it all looking great for us, and then we'll then put a, a wall in front of that, whether it's going to be a stud wall or a gyp liner wall, to then form our uh, internal walls then to, this, to these lovely rooms. Hello, how are you? I'm living on the moon. I'm calling from a telephone inside of a saloon. The only other person here left many years ago. And now I sit here at the bar feeling so alone. Read all of the books I had and walked the planet round. But still, the thing I'm looking for refuses to be found. Except this clanging deep grip. Oh, I am such a fool. A man who wanted quiet, so he went up to the moon. But now, this precious solitude, I so sublime has changed my sense of what is real and what is in my mind I think I hear the voices of my distant family the laughter of my oldest friends for years I haven't seen I know that that's impossible I tell myself each day but no one stops this growing sound They will not go away So you would, of course, on that time lapse, that what we've been doing is we've been making sure we get all the sand nice and level. Uh, you saw Matt sort of screeding it out just to make sure that once we'd whacked it the first time, screed it over, make sure there's no dips uh, or bumps in it. And then we uh, put a fine scattering over it again and did it again. Uh, you would have just about caught a second of Matt doing the last whackering in the basement area. However, the battery on the GoPro ran out. I didn't catch him, so we all think I've cut him out on purpose, but that's not true, Matthew. What I'm doing now is, it is the next day. Matthew is not very well. He wasn't very well yesterday or the day before, but he stuck it out, but he's finally given in and thought he needs a rest. So I'm here on my own doing some jobs. I'm sorting out the soil pipe in the corner to make sure we've got our feed from the utility and also the feed from the um, understairs 
cloaked toilet, if you like, in the basement. And when I say feed, I mean the uh, saw pipe feed, waste feed. That's what I'm trying to find out. That's the words I'm trying to get out for you. So I'm going to do that first. Then what I'm going to do is, while I'm waiting for the gas engineer to come, who's coming today, I'm just going to make sure that downstairs is 100% done ready and I can start cutting my DPC, so I should be doing that. And then when the gas engine is done, we can get in the kitchen whackered, get that 100% finished, and then look at some other jobs then. So if you remember from episodes, a couple of episodes ago, I think it was now, we cut this channel in the wall and that is the uh, inch and a half pipe we need, 40 mil, from the utility. So we're going to come through the hole up there, come down here, and it's going to come into this pipe. So what I'm going to do is I've got a couple of offcuts of pipe, put one in there, one in there, and put a fit in in the middle of there, just to bring me over a bit tighter towards this. And then what we'll do is I'll put a, an elbow on there then, and put one of the uh, double socket, inch and a half, inch and a quarter, double sockets on the top, to allow us to accept the basin and this inch and a half uh, utility waste as well. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make sure I chamfer my pipes first. And I have got one of these, and it's made by K-E-A-H, I think that is. I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce that. But um, this has got an SDS fitting on it, and I think it's just so you can get a bit more power behind it. I don't know. You can get other ones that are just uh, a standard um, spigot to go a normal drill, but I think this is the best one. I think it was about 35 quid, and it's brilliant. It really is. Um, Adam had got one of these. I saw it and thought, right, I've got to have one of them. Send me the link, as we all say meaning send me what it is and I'll buy one. So I'll just make sure this is all chamfered. I've got my uh, brush and lube ready to do that. So I'll get this set, get all this in there ready, and then it's another job complete. All I will have to make sure I do is it has got some fall on it. Now remember, this is only water. If this isn't soil pipe, this one, it's just water. So it just needs to turn a bubble, that's it. So I'll get on with that. And then we'll, uh, like I've already said, we'll get some other jobs done today. Take it nice and steady. You can see it on camera very well, but it forms a lovely chamfer. Make sure this is all clean because there's a bit of pea gravel in the end there. first. There we are. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm all right. You and as if I magic, the shopkeeper appeared. Hello, Adam. Hello, Adam. <laughs> I'm all right. Right then, back at it. Got to make sure you chamfer your ends because if you don't, it pushes the rubber and dislodges the rubber. Uh, and then what happens is you get a leak and you should always use lube. So what you don't want to do, and this is a tip for life, don't force it in dry, it causes trouble. So I'll get this set, and then we are ready to go. There we are. Plus it also helps to get it, get it on like that. You haven't got to mess around. If you don't put lube on it, it doesn't do that. So all I do now is, I haven't got a 90, so what I can do is, I know that it's about a 65 mil once it goes into the socket. I can measure what it is on that one over there, and met myself right here, which looking at that, to be perfectly honest, that should be all good, because I've got to lay my, for my channel there, and I've got to be in a position to get into it from the, uh, from the toilet. So I'll finish that, I'll stop the camera, finish that, and then we'll have a good look about then, and do something else. <laughs>
Right then, you're going to see on the time lapse that the DPC has gone down. I've just started folding and taping all my corners to make sure that when the concrete goes in, you don't end up with uh, tension in your in your uh, your membrane, which means you get voids in your concrete. Likewise, in the corners, weight it all down so it's right tight in the corner, and then tape it, overlap itself, and then I've just pinned it up there where I can, where I can get nails in. So what we don't have, then we put concrete in it, folds on itself. Uh, and I've come to the pipe, I've made sure again that there's no tension. So if I stand either side of this now like that, that will go up and over and fill properly. It won't sort of in effect do that when the weight goes on and form again like a, a, a lack of fill of concrete. Done that all the way down. I'll put this one on first and then I've put that one over the top. Where possible, over there, I'll show you in a minute. I have gone underneath the pipe because I can. Um, likewise here, what I did was I've cut it along this pipe here and then tucked it behind there, tucked it behind there and then taped it back up again. What I will do as well in a moment, once I've got an offcut, which I'm waiting to do upstairs, rather than cut it off the big roll, I'll wait till I've got offcuts and then I'll redo these bits I'm talking about now. I'm going to put a piece over the top of that, up and over the top of that and then tape it to that and tape it to that. So that encapsulates all of that. But like I say, I have run it underneath the pipe and then taped it all the way underneath there like that. What I did here was I just cut in the centre of my pipe there and the centre of my pipe there and then dropped it down and pushed it underneath. And you see on the footage now, I've just it's all underneath there and taped. And then again, likewise, taped, fold it around, so I've taped the corner and I've just, with an off cut I've got left, I've just um, started to overlap this, um, tape it all down and then stick it to the wall above the DPC uh, skirt level, like that. Like I've just said, I'm waiting for an, another piece of uh, excess now to tape onto that one to finish this off. That point here, again, tape my corners. And as you can see, evidence that we have a sparky on site. Brush, mess. Typical sparkies, there we are. And also, it really isn't any wonder why I charge so much. This is for an external light, and that's got to be, oh, blimey, I've got to say, that's nearly three metres. It's no wonder they charge so much when they've got excess cable like that. And the worst part is, he'll cut that off to length, check it with him, and wait in. That's the worst part. Absolutely terrible. What Neil is doing today is doing and finishing off the external lights for us, which is what you were just looking at, and he's also pulling the um, wide smoke alarm feeds in for us as well. More noise upstairs, that is the gas engineer. Now he's not been with us before, so I'm not too sure whether he wants to be on camera, so I won't on this occasion. However, in the future, if he wants to come on the camera, um, then we'll allow him to, no problem at all. But we'll have a look in a moment what he's been up to. Oh, also, you'll see on the screen there something else I've done. I've built a bit of a shutter at the point where, if you remember from quite a few episodes ago, where the soil pot went through the, the temporary DP, uh, up to DPC brickwork. I've shuttered that so we don't get any flower concrete out into the uh, cavity. So that's what I've done as well. Late finish last night. However, it is all complete. We all went away happy, knowing that that was a job that we needed to get done to allow us to concrete this week. And we're still on track for that. You can see on the screen, he ran it all above the uh, subfloor and concrete level for us to make sure that we've got no trouble with that, meaning we can then uh, cover the pipes over uh, before I start to whacker and DPM it which I'll be doing shortly. And I did a couple of jobs off camera, which included starting the shuttering to allow us to concrete down the side of the house. I've actually been in the subfloor area this morning and completed the, um, the 90, which I need to get done, as you can see on the screen now. And we've plasticed over the top of it as well to again, give it some more um, protection from the concrete. However, half of that pipe uh, will be within the insulation level. If I spin you around now, I'll remind you why that's happening. Long time viewers of the channel will know that this is our soak away, which is where the pipe I've just been talking about goes through here, up here, and then did go all the way up to the thing, but you can see it there now, it's all been removed to allow for our concreting. But you will also remember that that trench there it come through there, which you can just about see. There, look. It goes through there, all the way through to our mains, which is down there, 
which is uh, where our um, 450 inspection chamber is. Oh look, just realised I've got uh, someone watching what I'm doing. Oh well, hope she's happy. And then our solar pipe then comes through here underneath our DPM now and goes up to the mains of the house. So that our level is set and we were happy with the fall on that. It was what it should be. And then we've uh, obviously put this um, new one in to catch the toilet, which will be in the basement on the stairs cloak toilet room. So that's gone in at the level that we want and we're lucky it's still below um, finished floor level. However, on the side of that block is the top of the 90 and that will be just out the floor, which will be lovely to put in a um, pan connector straight into it. And as I just explained, it's out of the floor for that reason, because we've got to get a fall from there to here. So we've got to lift it up to get the correct fall. But we can't come up that high that this ends up being above the screed level, obviously. So we have dropped, luckily in one sense, that we're not out of the floor level and we are below insulation level as well. Just talked about this shuttering that I started last night. I've just um, concrete fixed it to the block wall there because it's going to be rendered, so that doesn't matter. I've then filled around that pipe there with a bit of insulation and I've chopped it into the ground. What I'm going to do, which you'll see in a minute, I'm going to put a timber on the floor and set up a proper sort of um, uh, brace for it to make sure that when we pull the concrete in, if I show you now, we've got to fill that void down there without covering this pipe. It'll go up to the bottom of that pipe and that's all of our ties in there to tie all these corners together when we start pulling in the retaining wall that goes across this way. It'll tie this side to this side and then into this retainer. As you can see in there, if I can get in there, you can see all the reinforcing sticking out there that we put in. And that went in on every course of flat blocks as we laid them. Long-term viewers will also remember that part. I know I do, my back's still aching. And I was only passing them to Adam, so I don't know how he's feeling. Anyway, let's crack on with it. I hope you enjoy this a bit of time lapse and a little bit of music. So this is all complete then. All I've done, same as downstairs, I've made sure that all my corners are nice and flat and there's no tension anywhere in any of the plastic. So looking at this, just make sure that when it just fill, it doesn't pull anything. I've tacked a batten on there to the floorboards to make sure it doesn't pull. Uh, I've then gone around this pipe as best I can. This has all been taped down. Again, these corners are taped because I've folded them, not because I've cut them. However, I have cut this part here just to get over this pipe well that will be in the concrete level and the insulation level, but there is no getting around that. We've got to get feeds to downstairs and that's the best way we thought is to, is to do it. You've already seen the fact that I've done all this insulation around here, which is what I've done, protected that. That's my feed there for my, uh, what will be the new kitchen sink. And again, this has all been taped and all been pinned to the wall out the way. Uh, and as I've already said, there's the pipe level there, look. Um, and we are, you know, we're a good couple of hundred mil of it. So, that will probably be the level where we push our insulation against it and then we will foam fill, cut the um, damp back and then foam fill against the pipes to make sure they're all protected when we put the screed in there. So there we are then. I've just started to do 
another another job which is to get the wiring in ready for the stats and the boiler feed for the underfloor heating with the three corner earth i'm just doing that now i've then got to set out this on the floor here so we know where to drop that down and then just pull it up and i'm going to suspend it from the ceiling and we'll concrete that in and that is electrical feeds for the island which i've got a plan somewhere here it is and there it is on there look it's just there so we've got to uh, drop it down if i orientate that better that's it uh, that is as i'm standing there the staircase is to my left and the island is just there so we've these this is where the wires are currently sitting here run them in the floor and then poke them back up there well my apologies about that gopro's there all set up ready to go pressed it it beeped yep good to go I didn't record anything at all. I've had enough of my GoPro now. It's not great. Battery's rubbish. Which then leads me nicely to say that we are currently talking to a company who will uh, hopefully be sponsoring um, a channel or a video for us, should I say, and allowing us to use one of their time-lapse cameras. So stay tuned for that, because we're excited about it. And we'll be able to pass on all of our thoughts and experiences with that that brand i won't mention it yet in case it doesn't happen all i've done then to explain i've just used my plant i've marked the kitchen on which is there i've then uh marked the island on which is there as you can see it there it's a two meter by one meter island giving us a 900 gap either side all the way around uh, and in the center that's the center of it there in the center is a hob and then a 600 cupboard either side it's i think it's an 800 in the middle and two 600s either side uh, and I'm going to put it there so it's under the cupboard, not under the cooker. I've just temporarily held it up there by the um, lighting cable, but I will retake that just to make sure it's in the right place and check my measurements. When we concrete this, I'm going to leave that on there for now. When we start concreting, all I'll do, that just holds that down. What I have done, however, is I have foamed it. You can just about see it there, look. I've foamed in there, foamed it inside and all the way around it to stop any concrete getting in it. Um, even though it doesn't matter that much, but I just thought I'd, uh, I'd do that, stop it filling up. And then we'll manipulate that in the correct position when we put the concrete around it and we'll level it all in. So there we are. Hopefully we can then just cut that sheathing back a little bit and then just have it coming out nicely in the insulation level, ready for the screed, uh, because the underfloor heating will only be going in the areas that you can see that aren't marked now. So this area here, there and there, because you don't put it under units. So there we are then, my apologies. I thought that made a nice little uh, time that's for you to watch while I set that out, but um, there we are. GoPro Hero 10, no, rubbish. simple bracing then just hold back a little bit of concrete it should be plenty i think i just did off camera then was to put a couple of tile nail screws in the bottom of that plate to stop that lifting up and also a bit of timber on top of there just to stop that forcing up the timber just to stop that as well like i say it is only um a 300 by 300 um column if you like of concrete there so i'm confident and hopeful that that doesn't move if it does we will deal with it the only main force which is why i've put a timber across the bottom as well is the depth of this there's going to be a lot of force at the bottom um, so it might kick out but as that is in there it's right against the dirt there's no way that's moving right before i did this and not on camera because it's not something i particularly enjoy but it's something that needs doing i've just started running these cables for the uh, the stats so that's the three corner earth all the way back to the um, wiring centre for the underfloor heating. 
I'm told that's what I've got to do. So that's what I'm doing. Label them up there. I've already run one from the wine centre all the way back to the boiler. I'm presuming that's the one that talks, makes it talk to each other. And I've now got to run another cable over to there to run this zone here. And then run a cable downstairs in that corner below to run the downstairs zones. Zone, because it'll be three zones in total. One in there, one in there, and then all of that downstairs. So there we have it, and that will finish my day for today and move us a lot closer to our four o'clock appointment with a concrete company tomorrow and then start in Monday, myself and Matthew, if he's uh, not still poorly bad, which hopefully he should be back, we'll start insulating and plasterboarding, well, everywhere, which will be great. I have now been joined by Adam. <laughs> because we are not far off concrete time, albeit an hour later than they should be here. Should have come at four. Then I found her, they said half past four, and now it's five o'clock. It's Friday, but it is what it is, isn't it? So what we're gonna do now, uh, we are gonna set up our levels ready to go. So as soon as they come, we can dip it, get it flat, get it level, which then sets us up then for the next process, which is the uh, insulation, PIR. And then on top of that, the uh, screed, with the unfloor heating inside it. So we're gonna start looking at our levels now, just to assist us when the concrete starts to go in. I fixed my laser on the wall there. I've got my, um, go on Adam, what's it called, that thing on there that? Receiver. Receiver, that's the word, I couldn't, yeah. Our datum is this threshold, and finished floor level is 75 mil above that. Have you uh, explained why it's 75 mil down? I was just about to start and just thought, oh, you know you? what, I'm not going to bother. <laughs> just to because. You've had a look flurry and everything. That just because. Supposed to perk you up. Okay, I'll, I'll explain it then. All it is is because when you put the doors in, obviously it's going to sit on a probably a 10 mil packer. Then you've got your sill, 30, 35 mil. Then you've got your frames, 65, 70 mil. And it just means that we're at a point where we're not stepping up and over your door. We can, you can put low thresholds and things on, but when you're trying to waterproof it still, I don't think, what do you think about the low thresholds? Just a pain, aren't they? There's, unless you want like a, I think it's part M compliance, which is a wheelchair access one. Yes. On, on, if you don't need that and, and you're doing an extension, you don't need to spend the extra money or whatnot to get a low threshold. You just leave it a course down. And by the time then your screed goes in, like at my house, uh, you end up about five to 10 mil lower than the very, very top of the frame. Um, so your transition is, is next to nothing, uh, as in, as in from out, inside to outside. So you, there's, it, there's no, there's, yeah, there's no need to spend all that money on low thresholds or that sort of stuff. Just have it a course lower, it's easy. But it also means as well, and you've suffered it already, haven't you? But we won't talk about that, will we? Suffer the pain of low thresholds and getting the outside to meet the inside. And Yes, I had a nightmare customer, the ones. Uh, uh, Nasty Nigel, his name was. Hi Nigel, if you're watching. <laughs> it wasn't Chris and that. <laughs> it, was, it, it was Chris and Nigel, yeah. But um, yeah, uh, complete arse. Anyway, um, he kept he kept doing. Oh, I think I'm, I'm going to tell the story now. You've got you got me off on one. We've got you. Here we go. He kept doing Get this. Comfortable. He kept doing this. Says, I want this. I want this. And he wanted no transition depth, uh, a, a, a change in level between the inside and the outside. And I kept saying, well advising him, or well, you need the outside to, like your slabs, your finished floor level of your slabs or whatever you're gonna to have to be lower because um, of water and all that sort of stuff and rain and driving rain and everything. You can't just have it, you know, like this because uh, the actual frame of your door won't work because there's little holes in the sill and all the, if the water gets into it, it all runs out, there's, there's internal channels. So you need the sill, it's all built in, it's all made for it. So he decided now, so he went off to get his own company to do, not as a, a, another company to do the doors and supply the doors. And all they did was just plunk the door without a sill on it. There you go. Well, there's no water. There's no way now. That water's going to come back, potentially come back in the house. And then how we had to lay the slabs in, as you open the door of the bifolds, they, they were just skimming and you could hear the rubber on the, on the slabs and that's what he wanted. So there was, there was literally no change in level between the in internal and the external and pound to a pinch of shit. 
it's flooded in a storm or something, driving rain. It's got under it and it's got into the house, I guarantee you. But we can't ask him because he sold up and moved not long after that. But there we go. So if you're living there, place in Arborn, I won't give the address, uh, <laughs> in driving rain. It's not this person's fault. No, it's nasty no exactly. fault. In driving rain, you might get, just might get, a little bit of water inside your house. It's Consider this part of the video, the part where we just get things off our chest and we, we have a greater weekend because of it. And <laughs> Adam, Adam has never achieved that. And he'll go on now and... He wants his wang up again. I ain't thought about him for seven, seven days now. Seven full days, down to zero. Yeah, <laughs> day, days fault. about thinking of Nasty Nigel. I've got to go home now. You just ruined your weekend. Yeah. Ruined your weekend. Talk about Nasty Nigel. Yeah. Let's not start Should on Ewan from, Black, from Barton Green. Oh, no. You know who you I are. I don't want to talk about him. <laughs> Horrible blow. I don't want to talk about him either. Um, okay, so we've had to make sure we've got a few things, and we've already talked about this already. We've had to look at where the soil pipes are to make sure at what level we're at. We've talked about this already, so I'm not going to do it again. But all we will do when the concrete starts to get poured, we've got our, our, our Doppler, which Martin from the Screed company we always use, Unplating Heating Company, he gifted us that, didn't he? He did. So he can have that, and it's he a did. great, fanti it fantastic really piece of kit. It really it's is. just a piece of aluminium, eight foot long, with two handles on it. It's excellent. Yeah. So what we'll do, we'll get them to pour it. The guys that come are really, really good anyway. They'll push it round with their uh, tube and we'll just doppel it out flat and then get our laser and we'll just dip it randomly just to make sure it sits level. And that's pretty much it, isn't it? That's all it is, yeah. The flatter you get it, the easier the insulation goes down. Simple as that. You've got this, the screed to go over it. If it's absolute mile out, like if you're doing this at home yourself or whatever, you're going to give it a go, save a bit of money, fair play to you. Um, you, you've got to get it flat just so your insulation sits nice on top, which you'll see once we get the insulation in. If you get a big hump in it and then you put insulation on it, it could rock over it, it could break, you, have a, you can have gaps under it. It's just it's a pain in a bit of the derriere, shall we say. If you get this nice and flat now, it just makes it easier. It's not 100% needed to be flat and level. If it's out, there's, you know, there's ways around it, don't worry about it, as long as it's not too high. However, Get it nice and flat now, it just makes the process after it easier. Because you've it got does. the liquid screen to go in, the, the finished bit, and that will get anything out. It'll be perfect after that. It's just the process in between, it'll make it a lot easier if you just get this. Just take your time on it and get it to, just get it flat. That's all you need to do. It's interesting that part, and when it comes to those liquid screens, it's got those little cages, hasn't it? It looks like yeah, the cages man. that you put over your downpipe to stop the leaves going down your downpipe. Yeah. He puts them on, he sets them, he can, he can adjust them, can't he? Yeah, yeah. And he puts yeah. his laser on it, adjusts them, and then he pours to it, and then when he's done, he just lifts them out, and that's it, it's brilliant. Anyway, that's to come. Yeah, man. So we are now sitting, waiting for the, uh, well, we're not gonna sit, are we? We're gonna stand. No. Um, <laughs> waiting for the concrete company. Sunshine's gone in, so it's not as warm, which is probably gonna help us a little bit when we start lumping from the front. So for now, Sit back and enjoy the time lapse, this is about to come, of doing the concreting. And uh, we hope you enjoy the music as well, we've chosen for you. Well, there we are then. All finished. All went well. Well, but I, do they think they're going to know that we're filming this before it actually goes in? Or? No, they'll never know. Not unless you tell them. Okay, I ain't going to tell them. Then. No, it'd be stupid, that would. It all went great. Um, the concrete's all perfect, <laughs> and uh, it's time to go home now. You flew in it, really, did? Well, with no problems at all. At it's all. just great. We just as if we end on it. Yeah. <laughs>
what well, this is the real one now there's no microphone so if it sounds rubbish i don't care at this point <laughs> we're tired it's about quarter past eight or something like that, yeah, about that yeah. uh we've just finished i'll show you there's a pip on the screen now of what we've done down the side of the building where that big retaining wall went in but uh, apologies for the sound quality now there's no microphone this is just finished now tired i just want to get a bed now <laughs> thank you very so much nice. again for watching yeah man and we'll see you next week if we can be bothered, bothered. yeah <laughs> <laughs> you'll be lucky